We're down here at Howard O'Neill's farm and we're getting ready to conduct a camera survey. So we're going through all the cameras that we're gonna need for this thing and we're making sure they've got fresh batteries in them. They've got good cards that are empty and ready to go. And, and uh, so just basically doing an equipment check here before we even head to the field. And um, you know, when we're talking about a camera survey, some people are confused as to why in the world you even wanna do one in the first place. Um, really the objective is to understand what you've got to work with. If you don't know how many uh, mature bucks you might have on your property, what the buck to doe ratio is, how many, you know, total number of deer per square mile you have, it's really hard to formulate a harvest plan and a, and a strategy going into the rest of your, your uh, managing season and on into the hunting season as far as what you plan to try to take off the property and set parameters for that. So what we're doing is gearing up to go, uh, getting all this stuff as I said, batteries and cards, and then we're gonna talk about how we conduct the survey, uh, how long we do it, how do we prepare for that in advance, and then most importantly, what do we do with all that information once we gather it, once we pull our cards and have a total number of pictures, how we take that information and compute that into a plan going forward. This is actually more than just putting cameras out and getting pictures of bucks. This is going to be a full-fledged scientific camera survey that is uh, the, the parameters that we're going to set up are what's recommended by the Quality Deer Management Association. So this is, this is a pretty serious attempt to understand what's going on with the deer on your property. So what's typically recommended is about uh, one camera, one bait site per 100 acres of habitat on the ground. So what we've got on the Huntera map is we can pretty easily determine those one, uh, 100 acre blocks. Conveniently, he has these one acre square grids shown on the property. So just by counting and, and plotting out, we can roughly say there's about 100 acres of, of property right there on your property line. But what we want to think about in terms of the deer aren't going to pay attention to this fence line. You're going to have deer moving back and forth off your property. So we're kind of looking at Obviously we want to know what's going on on your ground, but we have to understand that deer are sharing your neighbor's property as well. So looking at 100 acres of habitat with, with what's going on next door to you, we can then adjust our, our grids a little bit more loosely to determine that knowing we can set a camera up, let's say in this corner somewhere, approximately down in this quadrant, we'll have another camera location. And by the time we set this thing out, with this ground above, above you to the north and the highway being there, we're not gonna worry about that. So we can loosely say that the property line is gonna be our upper limit of that grid. So we're looking at about five or six blocks here on this 750 acre parcel. Obviously we have some irregularity. You have a, a subdivision here in the center. So we're gonna adjust for that. But we're also gonna know that the deer are using that property as well. They're coming and going through that. And there's probably people in there that are feeding deer too. So looking at the overall plan, we're gonna understand that we've got some areas that off the property that we wanna be able to determine what deer are using those too because they're sharing your ground just as well. On this, on this map, it makes it real easy for us to put some approximate locations with our magnetic pins about where our center points are gonna be on those 100 acres. And you guys know your ground really well, so you may say while we're out here today, now that doesn't make sense. That's in the bottom of a very deep valley, so let's get up on a ridge top, right? So we can adjust that accordingly. We'll come back at the end of the day and, and move our, our magnetic pins around and get those final camera sights plotted out on, on the map today. Today we're starting our pre-baiting and uh, there's, a, there's 150 pounds of kernel corn on the ground now at this site and Howard, the landowner, is going to come in here and check that bait to make sure that it stays topped off for the next week. Um, and these consumption rates are going to vary through the property. Some are going to be hit harder than others. But we're going to pre-bait and freshen these sites for a week. The camera survey will actually start a week from now, seven to ten days, but definitely at least a week of pre-baiting. 
And once the survey starts, we're gonna have clean, clean cards, so none of the photographs carry over from what we're doing right now just as a verification and for checking. But again, we're facing north with the camera. We're pre-baiting about five yards away to the camera bait. We've done this arc shape so that our deer, when they come and they feed on this, where they're not crowding over a central pile, but we can see them facing the camera, hopefully two or three deer, four deer standing there side by side. They'll tolerate each other's presence. We'll be able to distinguish characteristics of different antlers and um, of the different, the different unique bucks. So this one's getting set up and getting turned on again just to check so we'll be able to see that we definitely have deer coming in and they're using the corn and we'll be able to see how often we need to refresh it. Okay, this location where we're going to incorporate the Moultrie feeder and um, some may say that this test may not be as accurate, this testing location may not be as accurate for the survey because instead of having our bait in a central location that we're going to key our, our deer to have stationary in the middle of the frame, that we are getting a 10 foot, 15 foot broadcast pattern of corn over a larger area. So we're actually going to do a little bit of an, of an experiment on this property in itself because it's 750 acres, we're going to have over seven bait stations. We're going to incorporate three into um, and utilizing the, the feeders, but those are going to be scattered out well out into the grid. So in other words, we're not going to have three of those um, one, uh, 100 acre blocks congruent or next to a, another station that has a feeder on it. It'll have a free choice location between that. So this next feeder is several 100 acre blocks over from the other. So we're going to intersperse them and, and dilute them, if you will, into the, into the property to uh, make sure that we got a good sampling across the board. But uh, what we've done here is we, we've set it up with the same amount of feed uh, at six o'clock in the morning and six o'clock at night. There's 100 pounds in there. We'll monitor it through this week. Again, this is just a test week on the run of the cameras and the feed to see how the, the relationship goes and see if we've got to make any adjustments. If you like vintage cars, vintage guitars, and vintage women, you're gonna love the new vintage trail camera from Multi Products showing the vintage Realtree pattern from Bill Jordan's early inception of the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Sacred.